Welcome everyone, Al Berg here without Lola, and this is the Doggy Style Podcast, episode 30, and I'm in Ithaca, New York right now, uh, at the Homewood Suites. It's a beautiful, beautiful day, first day of my vacation, and I was rushing down stairs to get the 10 a.m. lunch. And sure enough, I get a call from work about uh, some question about something. Uh, And I said, oh, I'm on vacation. Can I wait? And I just didn't like it at all. So I made a mistake is that I forwarded my phone to my cell phone. And then after talking to the person, uh, it was okay to wait until Tuesday to resolve this. I mean, I have this for the people on my team. And the thing that bothered me is that I was rushing to uh, 10 10 a.m. breakfast deadline. And I get down at 9.45 and they're cleaning up already. So uh, it wasn't really 10 10 a.m. But I got a couple of eggs. And it is nice out. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day. Birds are chirping. And I'm just enjoying sitting. I'm sitting by myself right now. And I'm just enjoying... The view, the peacefulness. So last night I went out for dinner with my son, and he ordered this uh, order of nachos. It was enormous. I mean, enough for four people. So we worked on that. I think the place is called the Ale House, and I ordered. I was going to order steak salad, but then I ordered some other. It's a Caesar salad wrap, which I, I guess is just salad inside of a wrap. And I actually literally did not take one bite out of it. I ate, I'm so full from the nachos that I just took it home. It's in my fridge right now, and it's probably $9 down the drain. But on the positive side, there's a little weight that I've gained. So I came back to the room and watched the hockey game. It was uh, Washington Capitals versus Tampa Bay Lightning. And it was game seven to see who goes to the Stanley Cup playoffs. And uh, the Capitals won the game. It was pretty exciting for me because I am rooting for Alex Ovechkin, who is probably one of the best hockey players for the last 10 years. And ha- he hasn't won a Stanley Cup. And so I'm hoping he will. So it's going to be the Capitals versus the Vegas Knights. The Vegas Knights are an expansion team, which is amazing that an expansion team could make it to the Stanley Cup. So we'll see what happens. Either way, hockey is going to win. It's going to be the story of the expansion team that made it or the story of Ovechkin, who, who got his Stanley Cup. So either way, it's a win for the NHL. I'd say it's like in the 70s, 80s maybe. It's beautiful, beautiful. I can't. Now, I'm sitting here just letting the sun... Uh, baked down on me and I kind of think that this is I'm thinking of alligators basking in the Sun that inside of us there's this wonderful happy feeling of letting the Sun hit us and how it feels and if I'm ever in a bad mood I should come back to this time where I was sitting in quiet and peace I feel very good I took a shower this morning it's funny how a shower could do that for you sometimes when I'm traveling um, I won't take a shower. I, I don't get that sweaty, but my hair gets very messy. So I wound up wearing a hat to, um, you know, just to not look so messy. But I, I took a shower today and it feels great. It does feel good. Yeah, so I'm not going to talk about work right now, I don't think. I'll just talk about other things going on. Whatever pops in my mind. Well, one thing the sun does do is it uh, increases your vitamin D. And there seems to be a problem with vitamin D in the Western world, that we don't get enough sunlight. Uh, Sunshine, your body can create vitamin D from the sunshine. Uh, There's a Dr. Mercola who has some articles on on vitamin D, which I'll post with this this, uh, podcast. But I'm not sure if it's the vitamin D levels coming up, but it does feel great. 
I have to say. As the guy without a muffler uh, goes by. So I'm waiting for my son now. I've texted him. And now I have really nothing to do. I might just sit outside and enjoy. You know, I don't get to do this much. I work, I work a lot. I get into work. I, I rarely leave the building. I used to. There's um, juggling nearby me in Bryant Park in New York City, and uh, I would go and juggle a little bit. And I just haven't been, haven't had the need or urge to go for some reason. So I'm, I'm not with Lola, and I do miss her, and I'm going to tell her what I thought was a cute story about her. So I'm downstairs in my family room, and Lola comes and starts, like, getting my attention. I, I sit at a desk facing the wall, and there's a couch behind me, and she's behind the couch. So I thought she wanted to come up on the couch, so I, I usually tap the couch. She's very well behaved, usually doesn't go on furniture. Like, especially my bed. She will not go into my bed without asking me. So she um, she gets my attention, and I'm like, okay, come on up on the couch. And she's not answering. And so finally I, I say, okay, show me. That's kind of the tagline for her. So she knows that if I ask her to show me, that she'll, um, she'll, she'll go take me to what she wants. Um... So, so I ask her to show me, and she, she takes me upstairs, she takes me to the couch where my son's sitting on, and I notice that my son is sitting on the couch she likes to sit on, and he's sitting on, on, on her blanket, kind of, so I tap the couch, I go up, and she doesn't want to go up, and I don't know if she motioned to me, but I, I understood from her that she didn't want to go on the couch, because there was no blanket on there, and I've told her before, don't go on the couch without the blanket, so she, it's almost as she knows, so I said, Max, my son to me, uh, give me the blanket. So I take the blanket from him. I put it on the other side of the couch. I, I tap a few times, and she jumps right up onto the blanket and, and goes into a resting position. So it's just really funny how she communicated to me in all sorts of ways to follow her, um, what she wants. I mean, I think I had to figure it out, and it is possible. I totally, totally don't know. You know, to, it had nothing to do with that. But as you said, I thought an interesting event um, that she was able to do to get my attention, follow her, and then ask me somehow with body language to do something for her. Though, though she's a dog, and there is a lot of work, of course, the walking. Um, I'm on the, seem to be the only person in the house that wants to walk her, though my wife does walk her once in a while. feeding, the cleaning, a very, very well-behaved dog. Um, if a person was so be well-behaved, they'd get all sorts of awards and things. I mean, really, just very, well, you know, once in a while she could get a little uh, annoying when we're eating, but I mean, I don't know. We get the good food and she doesn't, and sometimes also she forces you to pet her which I think is cute. I'm not sure Caesar or some of the other people think it's terrible. Um, and I, I wish there were more dogs that she liked or were in my neighborhood. It's just a, I live in a very boring neighborhood. And whenever I walk, we rarely even see anybody. So, um... A bunch of guys came over, some painters making a lot of noise, and it reminded me of uh, Charlie Munger, who's Warren Buffett's sidekick, coined the term Deprival Super Reaction Syndrome, D-S-R-S, D-S-R-S, and he uses a story of a guy who had a 180 degree view of the water from his house and a neighbor put up a tree 
at the corner of the neighbor's property and now the guy only had 179 degree view of the harbor from his house and it triggered him and it's kind of funny when you have something that's taken away from you your reaction is very very great so uh, recently at work some people went from offices to cubicles they changed the layout of how uh, people worked and a few people I spoke to seem okay with it I don't know it just seems like I don't know if they were just making maybe they are smarter than me and they don't complain maybe they've been taught not to complain but I think if it was me I'd be all over this thing oh anyway so if you haven't read anything by Charlie's Munger I'll post a list of his 25 cognitive biases in the show notes it's something definitely to listen to there's a lot of wisdom he's, he's pretty old now and sure probably won't be allowed around that much longer I think he's in his 90s and one interesting thing I find is some people say that Warren Buffett isn't he's he is a great investor but the reason he's a great investor is different than what you would think the idea is if you had a contest at say Yankee Stadium 40,000 people were there and you had to flip a coin and between you and the person next to you you'd flip a coin and somebody he would call heads or tails or she would call heads or tails and whoever if he got it right he stays in the game and if he you and if he got it wrong you would stay in the game something like that so 40,000 people to start with we flip the coin and now we have 20,000 people left because you know somebody heads or tails somebody has to win somebody has to lose and um, we do it again and we have flip a coin we have 10,000 then 5,000 then 2,500 all the way down to uh, I'm not sure how many times it would be but if the calculation would be 2 to the what 2 to the X power equals 40,000 or the square root of 40,000 I think I guess would, would be about the answer and it turns out I guess the square root of 40,000 is 200 200 times 200 is 40,000 so it means it would take 200 coin flips so it means somebody won a coin flip 200 times in a row that's pretty amazing um, it's funny if you win the lottery I don't know, does that make sense I, I'm, I'll have to check that I'll, I'll verify it on the notes so, so let's assume it is 200 times in a row it's, it's amazing but is that person great at flipping coins or are they lucky luck I guess maybe the psychic somebody's smoking over here nice unbelievable and it turns out a noisy thing so some guy comes over with a cigarette and turns on a loud something so I'm basically heading out go somewhere else with this freaking ugly green piece of shit truck yeah, so I'm in deprival super reaction syndrome. Just trying to enjoy my day. And it got, uh, I don't know if it was ruined or what, by some idiot. So I'll, uh, I'll walk around. There's other things I could do. I didn't have to sit right there. I could sit. There's a grassy knoll here. I think there's some benches in the front. Yeah, there's a bench right here. Yeah, so what I was saying was that uh, so what I was saying was that the guy that won those coin tosses wasn't lucky and just like it could be the same with Warren Buffett that you have millions of people playing the stock market somebody is going to do really well and somebody's going to be a Warren Buffett just by chance and they might not have any skills and it could be all luck just like in the coin toss example <laughs> okay 2 to the 200 is wrong I did a little math and I'm still not positive but 2 to the 15th power is like 32,000 and 2 to the 16th power would be 
64,000, so, so maybe 16 times. So if 40,000 people in the stadium, it would take 16 flips of the coin to find the winner. Now and again, that's still a lot to, to throw 16, um, or to pick the proper coin toss, or however you want to do it, uh, 16 times in a row. So that's the uh, Warren Buffett theory of investing. One interesting, interesting thing about investing, and I've studied investing, I've worked for hedge funds, is that, first of all, it is pretty random. The market is random. I have looked at it, and it does follow a random walk. So the other thing is that any strategy that works will, will stop working at some time because people will figure it out, use it, and the fact that it works, that it worked, means it won't work anymore. And one other thing, if somebody's trying to sell you a winning investment strategy, it's, it's bullshit. It has to be bullshit. Uh, because if you figure out a winning investing strategy, you are not going to share it with anybody. What you might do is you might invest it, uh, try to uh, raise money as a hedge fund or invest your own money. But there's no way you would, you would give it out. So anytime you see a strategy in a book, it most likely won't work. I'm not saying it's a fact that it won't work, but my opinion is that in studying this and trying to develop my own investing strategies, that it probably won't work. And that's uh, part of it is that the future is unknown. Not at an airport. I'm just sitting by a highway. And there was a truck that went by. One thing I find funny about Lola, and now I'm inside, so it might sound a little different, is that she's afraid of elevators. She has some fears. She's afraid of metal grates. Like she goes out of her way to avoid them which is interesting. She's also afraid of the wind and um, elevators. So. And that's hard. That's hard to teach a dog to overcome fear. And I've seen Caesar do it, but he does it through forcefully uh, doing things over and over again. So I'm going to pack up, get out of here, and... Uh, Okay, so this is part two of my podcast number 30. This time I got Lola with me. We're back on Long Island. We had a tough, tough drive. It wasn't that bad. Most of the drive was good from upstate New York. And of course, probably, probably 75% of the drive took 25% of the time and the 25% of the drive getting from uh, Westchester into New York was terrible. Long Island was te traffic was terrible, and the mistake I made, I'm going to say, is that I didn't uh, time it well. So I, I think coming in at rush hour was a mistake. So if I want to do it next time, I have to leave a little earlier and get uh, get into the city between th like maybe 3:30 the latest. Uh, so which means leaving 9, 10 o'clock. So Lola's here. She's looking for a for a rabbit. She, there's a rabbit somewhere. She's like really excited. I could see. And um, <coughs> had a you know a nice time with my son, uh, who was in the car with me. Uh, and then tomorrow, I'll be at the Yankee game. And my other son wants to go to the baseball game. He loves baseball. His hobby is catching, trying to get baseballs at a baseball game, and he's pretty good at it. He's got like 50 balls or something. Uh, and he learned from a guy named Zach Hempel, Hempel, who wrote a book on this, and also um, has a YouTube channel, which is pretty interesting. So, uh, 
the only thing I don't like about it, well, since I've done a lot of driving, um, so tomorrow we're going to take the train into the city and then the subway up to Yankee Stadium. The only th oh, I'm getting pulled right now. Somebody has to go really badly, huh? Yeah, so she's pulling me to, uh, to, to her duty grounds, which she makes. She always makes it the same place. But it's, it's nice, nice to see her. <laughs> There's a dog barking at me, a little cute dog. Wait here, wait here, uh, Nigel called you Lola. Wait here, wait here, wait for the car to go. So there's a little tiny dog, Napoleon. The little dogs are the loudest dogs, the most vicious, it seems like. She's a little actually afraid of them. She she is afraid. She's a 75-pound dog. Could be even be a pit bull mix. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't like that. Don't do that. She was just, uh, she does a certain rub in sort of gr the ground. Sometimes I'll say there's, uh, there's some sort of animal poop. They call it something and she'll rub it. She does, does a rub a certain way. It's very interesting. It's different than rubbing her back. But uh, anyway, I'm going to get back into my, I hope I can do it. Uh, this is a problem. So one problem I got to solve is that for me to, sh to go through a list of mine, like I have this list on, on persuasion, I have to log in and it's difficult to log into my system. I wish it was more like Twitter, where if there is no login, you log in once and that's it. So I have to do that. What are we doing? Are we waiting? Which way you want to go? <gasps> no, no, you gotta wait. Up, up, up. No, no. You gotta wait for daddy. You gotta wait. Okay, that's a good girl. Yeah, you don't go in the street. Okay, so let me say I'm probably going to have to sign in. I'll pause in that case. Okay, so I'm going to go through my persuasion book today, work out some of the ideas and chapters. And we're at the pool at the park and there's a baseball game going on, so Lola won't be able to go in there. Okay, it's funny. Some of these things I think I talked about the last podcast, but I'll do it again. Uh, so what I have is I have a random uh, shuffle function and I have a list of 2,400 items and it shuffles them. Come on, we can't go in there. Come, come on, we can't go in there. Come on. So Lola just went into the park, wanted to, wanted to go run around. And... Um, I talked about this, I'll say it again. Exclusive language is the first item that came up. And exclusive means that for my listeners only, um, okay, so we're going to go to a different park. Uh, pretty close. Uh, we'll see if she could run around there. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, so exclusive language is for our customers only, or, or just something that shows you uh, for first time callers that only you have access to this deal. So just think of ways you can sell your product with exclusiveness. Members only, you can have members. I know Chiadini uh, likes the term family. Come join our family. Uh, the next item I have is use in peers. I'm not sure what that means. Unfortunately, these a lot of these items might have the curse of knowledge. 
which means it's I would the time I wrote it it made a lot of sense but now I have no idea what it means like that one and then illusion of predictability come on hmm illusion of predictability it baffles me I'm not sure what it means but I will do a little research and see if I could find some answers to these okay next one is echo people's words so supposedly uh, you can persuade people by using the same phrases they use so listen listen and write them down so if a, a boss is using the term don't throw people under the bus which is very interesting that I had heard a recording from an old boss and he used that term throwing people under the bus so there was a case where somebody was late with some data to me somebody was late with some data to me and the there is oh don't throw this guy under the bus now it's just a weird expression and um, my boss who worked with this other guy used that same expression that and accused me of throwing people under the bus so <laughs> I don't know what happened, but I, either I didn't persuade well, or, or maybe I did do something wrong. So, I, another thing that I I want to start doing is just, when somebody says something, it doesn't mean they're lying or they're making stuff up. I probably did something. Most most complaints is not just one person. I mean, you, I, I, there almost every every time this kind of thing happens, there's uh, multiple issues and reasons. No, no, where are you going? Come on, come over here. Come here, where are you going? Come on. So Lola just saw a young, a young, a young, a teenager, female that she seemed to want to meet. Oh, what's the matter? Is that bothering you? Okay, so echo people's words. So, yeah, so if you hear somebody speaking, uh, and, and again, this gets into likability. We like things that are like us. So if somebody uses a term you like to use, and there's even something called NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, which I don't know how valid it is. They they claim you should echo um, a person's, you know, type speaking, that there's three distinct types. Come on, come on, we're going this way, come on. There's three distinct types of language, auditory, I hear what you're saying, visual, I see what you're saying, and there's one called kinesthetic, which I, I guess it means I feel, I feel your pain or it's more feelings or I'm not really sure. So in theory, you could, people should like you better if you talk the way they talk. Um, now I know my boss is really into sports, so maybe sports analogies would work well with him. Come on. Come on. Ooh, very bright sun. No, no, come this way. Come, come this way. Come on. Come. Oy, she, <laughs> she doesn't want to come. She's got in deep smell. <coughs> and it may be hard to see some of these things. Come on. Wait, stop, stop. You're not stopping. How come you don't know how to stop? What's so hard about the stop? Wait. Stay. Wait. Okay, she's staying. Wait. Okay, go play. Go play. Go play. She seems very happy. There's a rollover, which she just did. She likes to run, and at the very end of her, her run, she does like a little rollover. That was funny. Oh, I got to throw your tree. <laughs> you, you remember how to scratch your back? I taught her on a video. Let me see you scratch your back. Come on, scratch, scratch, scratch. No, no, that's a rollover. Scratch. Come on, scratch, scratch. Come on, scratch. Okay, rollover. I'll give you a treat. Rollover, rollover. Good girl. She seems better at the. She seems better. Oh, there's a little doggy here. Growling at us. Who's the doggy? Who's a growler? <laughs> there's a lot of growling.
You're, you're a nice little doggy. Your doggy's noisy. Your doggy's noisy. Well, it's vicious, vicious, vicious. The little poodle's vicious, showing teeth and everything. <coughs> so there's a couple of little dogs, very vicious. I tell you, I'd be more scared of them <laughs> than my dog, which is five times their size. I mean, they put up a good fight. Good act. Teeth showing. Yeah, so you, you 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 can't be obvious with it. Like if somebody says, hi, how are you? I mean, you can say, hi, how are you? And, and this is even a way person greets you in a text message I found. So if they say, hi, Al, you can say, hi, Bob. Or if they don't say hi, then don't say hi in there. So mimic people. Um, this is supposed to help with liking. So people like people who like them. So anyway, you could be like somebody that you want to like you. Try to do it. Oh, hi. You, let me see. Roll over. Come on. Oh, she did. That's good. That was good. She's got her rollover down much better than her scratch. Um. And the next one is either. I'm not even sure what that is. Oh, maybe that means to give people a choice, but a choice within your bounds. So. You can either go for a walk or play basketball. So people feel like they have a choice, but really you've, you've set the boundaries for it. We could either go here or do this. We could do A or B. And that way, if there's an item C you don't want to do, uh, you don't give that as a choice. So it seems like I think you can give, a, like children, you can give choices so that they, you can stay up an hour later if you do this or go to bed now. And they don't have the choice of just stay up later and not do the chest. Hey, Booby, over here. There's a treat right here. Right here, right now, no? no? Yeah, yeah, you got it. Um, next one I have is value proposition. Yeah, I didn't do a good job. I should have written some notes. I'm not sure what I meant by this, but I guess anything you offer somebody, you want to give them some value. What's the value? So if you make an offer or a statement, are you telling them the value of it? What is the value of your offer? Is there, what's the value proposition? So the value may be more money, better income, getting a date. It could be anything, but uh, state your value proposition. And in theory, you should get more persuade people to look into your offer. Okay. Hmm. The next one, I, and again, some of these I do have to do some research. The next one for persuasion is I have forced confession. So somehow cops can force people to confess to some, a crime they didn't do, which is pretty amazing if you think about it. So how do they do that? What's their method? It's worth uh, doing some research if you're into persuasion. I don't have anything listed, so I'm going to also have to do a little research into that. Hmm. Not sure what the next one is. I have the word irrationality um, in terms of persuasion. Oh, I'm wondering are these. I wrote somebody's name down who, I don't know, it's not, he's, this guy's alt-right. And he said some things I don't like, but I wrote him down because I felt he was persuasive. I felt there was something persuasive about the way he spoke. And his name is Vox Day. And I really haven't seen much of him lately. I don't know, he hasn't come across my, my radar. Um, I'm not recommending him in any way, but I just noticed that he did have a persuasive way of speaking. Hey there, booby. Um, now, I don't know why I have irrationality. I don't know how that's persuasive, but I had a reason for it. Okay. 
Um, this next one I think I got from from Chiadini, but I'm not sure. And it says, as you can tell, I'm not going to charge a million dollars for it. And I saw this one also somewhere that the, the whole point of this is that, yeah, you want a cookie? Oh, geez, that's hard to break. I'm trying to crack the cookie. Okay, you ready? ready? Here's the cookie. Okay, go find it. She really ran after that. Oh, you got it. Yes, uh, she's sitting down eating a good girl. Um, so one way you can raise your price is so I'm selling a course and I can just say that. I can say, as you can tell, I'm not going to charge a million dollars for it. But I can actually say how it could be worth a million dollars. So that sets a higher contrast. You know, so here's a, here, I'm not going to charge a million, that million dollars, like, but if it's a thousand, a million is a very good contrast. If you want to charge a lot for something, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> you run so nicely. Stop, stop here. Let's put your, let's put your leash on. Okay, so she's been off leash for a while. I don't know if we can tell when she was on leash, but uh, we're, we're out of the park now. So I'm going to put the leash back on her and we're going to walk this way. Uh, the funny we're gonna walk this way <laughs> um, next thing I have is Sam Harris I find he's very persuasive so I'm not sure exactly what he does to be persuasive but he is I find him very persuasive so he's using some some persuasion techniques I bet to um, to be persuasive so I, I one of the things I have to do is do some research, listen to his podcast, see if I can analyze and figure out what makes him a persuasive speaker. Uh, the next thing, I'm not sure what I meant by this one either. I, I, you know, I have to apologize. I should have done these earlier and maybe I, it teaches me that when I do write something down, I have to write more context to it personality type that disagrees with everything I don't know I don't know if that's persuasive that might be anti-persuasive because if you disagree with everything <coughs> I'm not gonna like you so I guess I'm saying it from a negative that anybody who's disagreed with everything you say um, is not somebody you're gonna like <coughs> Next one is focus equals importance. And again, I'm not sure, unfortunately, if I must sound like an idiot, that focus equals importance. So I guess what I'm focusing on is important. Oh, I see a rabbit. <coughs> there is a rabbit here, but you got to be slow. I, there's a rabbit here. Come on. Got to be a little slow. Okay, we're going to try. We're going to periscope the rabbit. You and you and going after the rabbit. Come on. Come on. Okay, so we'll we'll pause this, and I'm gonna put it into the slow down. You're going way too fast. You you want to get the rabbit? You can't just run after it. Slow down. Slow. Wait, wait. Okay, we're gonna put this on. Okay, I don't know if the previous one came out, but uh, Lola says we're under 24-hour video surveillance. Um, Lola could have easily had two rabbits. So two rabbits were, you know, they were babies. I, they were pretty young. And she looks like she could have gotten them, but she didn't. I had her on leash, so she wasn't able to. But they were pretty, pretty, you know, definitely dog food types of bunnies. Come here. You got this whole field to play on. Relax, wait. Take this off you. Okay, go play. Go play. Go play. She's having a lot of fun. <coughs> okay, so let's continue. <laughs> oh, is it going to come up? I don't know. Yeah, so it looks... Oh, did I get logged off? I got logged off. The phone... Re I, so what happened was I put the phone... <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately, it's not working, Loli. 
It's not working. I have to sign back in. Annoying. Yeah. Boy, that dog looks happy. You are one happy dog. I could tell. Okay, so I'm going to continue. It's, uh, I had to re-randomize my list because my, sh my phone shut down. Uh, when the phone is low and I use certain applications, it uh, goes kaput. So I have here a periodic table or infographic of persuasion. Uh, I'm not sure if anybody's done this or it's my own idea for myself to do it. So it's just an idea, I think. <laughs> it's funny how all of these are really hard to decipher. So I have dot, dot, dot is seen as astute, dot, dot, dot. I don't know what that even means. Okay, next one is people don't like to be laughed at. So if you make a joke on somebody's behalf, oh, look at him, ha, 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 ha. There's something very unpersuasive about it. Now, self-deprecating humor is okay, but, but I find you got to be careful because you could be, a, I'll call it a self-deprecating humor trap. Come on, we can go through here. I don't see anybody here. Oh, wait, there's a few people. There's still a few people here. Yeah, we'll go through here. Wait, wait, stop, 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 stop. I call it a trap because what could happen is somebody might self-deprecate themselves and you might laugh at it. And that kind of confirms that you think that about them, you know. So if somebody, if I say, "Oh, look how look how thin my hair is," uh, or "Look at my chrome dome," I could uh, blind people with it. And if somebody laughs at it, if somebody laughs at it, it could mean that they, well, if you have a chrome dome, then they know that. But But, you know, so, so it could be somewhere, oh, I'm so fat, I could, you know, crack the ice, whatever it is. You know, you could be, you, it could be a setup. Could be a setup for what uh, somebody might be setting you up. So anyway, but don't laugh at people, you know. Uh, maybe self-deprecating humor is okay. But uh, if somebody is making fun of somebody, I would say definitely not a good idea. I think I see a rabbit, and maybe not. Probably not a rabbit. Keep kicking things. What am I kicking? What am I kicking, huh? Um, and next one I have is, is so don't laugh at people. Uh, next one I have is branding. So we know that Trump, at least at one point, was very good at uh, professional brander. So brand is important. What does your brand stand for? What does Al Berg stand for? Um, there's many people that are associated with something. And it's important to have a brand. Oh, there is one there. There's a rabbit over there. Go get it. Go get the rabbit. See it? Oh, it left. It left. Okay. No, it was over here, Lolly. I'll show you where. It's gone. It's gone. It was over here. It went, there was a rabbit there, and I like to hang out under the fence. It was right here, here. It was right here. It was right, no, no, right here. It was right here, right there. Yes, yes, there's the rabbit. The rabbit was right there, yes. Yeah, the rabbit was right there. Watch your head, don't hurt yourself. They're very smart, the rabbits know, okay. Oh, there's one right there. Come here, good girl. Come here. Come here. Come here. I got a treat. Come on. Come. <laughs> so she saw a rabbit I didn't see. That was a good chase. You chased. You got a nice exercise from that rabbit, huh? Come here. Let's put your leash on. So she just chased the rabbit. Got a nice run after the rabbit. Okay, that rabbit took off. Did you get the rabbit? Did Lola get the rabbit? Got a little afraid. <laughs> a little afraid. I don't want her to kill a rabbit. Yeah, where'd the rabbit go? Where'd the rabbit go? 
So branding is important. This uh, is a book that I kind of copied my title off of, of one of my books called 22 Immutable Laws of Branding, which I should read and put a few notes uh, in the chapter. Or I should add to this, uh, this chapter. So here's one, the Forbidden Keys to Persuasion Lesson Manual. So I like that, forbidden, something that's forbidden. Come here. No, 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 come here. Come here. Right. So I like that. So anything forbidden, people want. So you could say, I don't know if I could say it would excel, but the forbidden techniques. It's not really forbidden. So something that's forbidden, people want. If there's something about what you do is that's forbidden, then think about how you could sell that. I think that's a great, I like that one. That's a great one. Um, I had two items here, and uh, one is thanking, and I can't stress this enough, I do say this often, is to thank people. If somebody does something for you, you really want to thank them, and you don't want to just say thanks. You say, oh, thank you so much, I really appreciate how you helped me, and just make it a habit, because if you don't thank people, you can, number one, piss them off, and number two, they might not do you the favor next time. Like, oh, he didn't thank me. So it's important to thank people. <coughs> and the other one is because. And so, and I've talked about this a number of times. And is that whenever you ask for something, you should always use a because. Could you do X because I don't have time? And it turns out it doesn't really matter what you use as a, a reason. Just using the because seems to improve persuasion. Okay, I have a I have a link here, but I'm not going to go to it. Okay, so here I have something called the IKEA effect effect. What you make or create, you value higher than something you didn't make. That's interesting. When you, it makes a lot of sense. I'm not sure how you can use that, but if you do make something, it does does it obviously gets a higher value in something you didn't. Um, so maybe something as an Excel course, I could help people make something that they want, so something specific to their hobbies or needs or wants, and it could be anything. It could be anything that a person wants, and they make it themselves. And they will value it more. Um, next one is association principle, and I have three items on it. Uh, associate group or person with your enemy or negative behavior. Hmm. So if you don't like somebody and, and you're this clear enemies, you associate them with that, that group and other people will dislike them. And I have a few Hit Hitlerian things. Uh, I'm Jewish, so it's, I guess, okay to quote Hitler. Uh, Hitler, Jews' fault that Germany was defeated in World War I. That's one of the things he said. <laughs> and Hitler also said Jewish press are liars. I spelled liars wrong. You know, it's interesting. Uh, you know, the press does get a bad name. And uh, many of them are Jewish. Not all of them, but uh, you know that's a bad thing. <laughs> Maybe I'll scratch that one. Okay, there's a website called generationaldynamics.com, and there was something persuasive about his technique. Uh, some guy named John Zanakis, he's from MIT, he claims that he's never been wrong in a prediction. Uh, and uh, he's got some something persuasive. I'm not sure what it is. So I'll have to do a little bit more research to see if I could figure out what it is. But one thing, if you find somebody persuasive, then they, they're doing something. There's a technique they're using that you might be able to copy. So Look for look for people who have persuaded you, and try to identify, if you can. I mean, hopefully there's either in writing, 
and you can analyze the language like what makes his what makes their speech or sp uh, spoken word or writing persuasive so I just thought it's interesting uh, next thing I have is habits now I don't know I guess habits are persuasive if that makes sense so if you do have a habit you're going to do it. I mean, it's very so. If you can create habits in people, I do. I do. You know, you get them to do a bunch of things over and over again. Then, when you don't try, you can uh, you can persuade them. But I'm not sure what I meant by them. The next one I have, and I'll have to look this one up. Rational choice theory, which I'm not sure what it is. And uh, I have a YouTube video, which I won't. Uh, next one I have is something called dramatic difference, and I know I got this from Doug Hall, uh, who is the author of Jumpstart Your Business Brain, and he claims there's three uh, three laws of persuasion or business. I'm not sure what he calls it, and they are overt benefit, real reason to believe, and dramatic difference. And and I would say pick up his book if you're you have a business. Seems really interesting. I, I like I like his writing. I need to apply it more. Unfortunately, like everything in life, but uh, we'll talk about dramatic difference because that came up. So if you're selling your your idea, you have to have not only be different than everybody else, but dramatically different. So you need to have identify what is dramatically different about your idea. Um, and again, I could probably review his chapter and add some more notes, and I will in the book. What? Hmm. I have what as a persuasive what. I don't know how what persuades me, but there might be something with the question what. But I can't think of anything right now. Okay, here's one I, I kind of like. Uh, I see people that they'll say, if you're watching on YouTube, hit the like button and subscribe. So basically a call to action tell the person what to do they may not know and with an if and if your content is good they'll do that or you I know I heard people say you can do me a really big favor matter of fact <laughs> on this podcast if you actually have gotten anything out of this please do me a favor and hit the like button I really would appreciate it and thank you in advance so uh, and the next one, <laughs> wait, it's like a some sort of bug. <laughs> oh. It's like a small green bug on my glasses. <laughs> and I, so close, I couldn't even see it. Okay, so next one is activating emotion, and I don't know what that means. And again, I've gotten. I'm in the process of writing a book on persuasion, so I do have to do some research on these things. Next one I have is rare, and I've spoken this about about this before. So things that are rare are worth much more. So the rarer something is, so so if you want to be successful, actually it's good, or persuade somebody to to take your offer, make sure it's rare. One of, and some more of the words, one of a kind, only only something, only what, the only one. Uh, I don't know if the first is as good as only, or you can use rare, only five left. So the, the, the rare, make something rare, and you'll do better with uh, getting people to want it. Only 1,000, I'm only selling 1,000 of these. <laughs> this one I thought is funny, that somebody said, we know from cognitive science so you make a statement and you say we know from science cognitive science i like that one it sounds persuasive uh we know from science that a b c d we know from experience we know from where that if you learn this skill you will increase your salary i can't tell you exactly how much but it's almost guaranteed to increase your salary either by getting a new job or 
you know, avoiding a layoff, which you would go from your current salary to zero. The next one I have is persuasion requires simplicity. Oh, I hate dogs barking at me. Come on, you want to go here? Come on, we'll walk once around the, the corner. Um, so it seems like something that's simple. If you can simplify something, it becomes persuasive. Oh yeah, there's a rabbit right here. Is that a rabbit? I see a rabbit in the grass here. It's right here. It was laying. It's over here. No, it's over here. You can't see it even. Yeah, it's right there. There it is. It looks like a big mouse. Oh, Lola, Lola's hunting it. Oh, I feel fit. I feel fit the little bunny. Run, bunny, run. She's in a, um, she looks just like a freaking lion the way she's walking. I have to tighten up her leash a little bit so she doesn't break her neck. She's doing something weird. I'm not sure why. She's like moving her mouth. And of, of course, my camera. This, she's, I'm going to say she's like four feet away from a bunny face to face with it. She's staring it right in the eye. She's smelling it. What a good girl. Come here. You want a treat? You want a treat, Lola? Lola, you want a treat? Oh, the bunny hasn't moved. The bunny's staring at her. And I'm getting powered off. 